All right, welcome back. You heard some pretty pessimistic economic numbers in the last segment. Now the question is, can House Republicans possibly rescue the economy, which looks like it's going to need rescuing? So let us ask Congressman Chip Roy from Texas. Chip Roy, welcome back. Thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. I don't know if you heard any of the numbers out today. Everything fell. Retail sales fell. Manufacturing fell. Business investment fell. It's not a good story. All right. Having said that, we'd love to cut spending and taxing and regulating. Let me get you. Have you seen this White House press memo uh, attacking you guys. You, you haven't really put your policies up yet. They're saying Republicans want to increase gas prices because you don't like to sell SPRO, I guess. You're going to protect the rich tax cheats uh, because of the IRS. You're going to raise taxes on the middle class. That's the fair tax. And on top of all that, Chip, you're going to cut Social Security and Medicare. Now, that's the White House notes from the press office um, I just want to give you a chance to rebut all this stuff. Well, Larry, good to be on as always. Look, that's the playbook Democrats always use, right? To go back to the same old well. And what we're actually about is trying to free up the American, pay American people from the stranglehold that the federal government has placed on them. They've done that a number of ways. One, dumping trillions of dollars into the economy in the name of COVID, which caused most of this inflationary mess in the first place. Crowding out private investment limiting the ability of the private sector to go forth and conquer and to produce prosperity and wealth and manage the market the way it's supposed to, not without the government interfering. And importantly, we shouldn't be spending money we don't have to fund the alphabet soup of regulations that is strangling our economic growth. You mentioned it right before this segment, where you're talking about all of the climate change and the woke regulations that are strangling the ability of the American people to do their job. That's, I think, the important part that's missing here. We're all about empowering the American people, all uh, levels across the entirety of the spectrum, and make sure that they can go create wealth and opportunity rather than having the government doing what it's doing right now, which is what it always does my entire lifetime. Government is the problem. We need to get that out of the way, stop spending we money we don't have. So we just want to put common sense reforms in place, limit spending at FY22 levels at the top line. You can have the defense spending you need to defend us against China. Limit the non-defense discretionary. Drop that down to pre-COVID levels. Boom, you're cooking with peanut oil. You, you cut the money from the bureaucrats, you fund your defense, and you get out of the way of the American people. Yeah, listen. I mean, um, our friend Kevin Hassett, former CEA chair, has suggested, first of all, make a fight on the debt ceiling. And I'm with him on that. Make yep. a fight. There has to be a showdown. So for every, in, every dollar increase in debt, cut spending by $3. Uh, last night, your colleague Scott Perry was on the show, and he said, mm -hmm. fine, how about cutting spending by $4? And I'm saying, <laughs> okay, that's great. Joe Biden doesn't even want to talk to you all, as far as I can tell. Kevin McCarthy is willing to go to the White House and talk and negotiate, and Biden is saying no. Biden doesn't want to even acknowledge as a Republican House now. So what do you think about the debt ceiling? Tomorrow is the, uh, it's not the end of the world, but tomorrow the debt's, uh, debt hits its own limit. I mean, you're going to make a stand on that. And I think it probably would help the economy, frankly. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'd, I'd go with it. Yeah, I think there's no question that it would help the economy. Look, people that start hand-wringing about the whole default on the debt, we're not going to default on the debt. We can prioritize debt. In fact, current law allows for the prioritization of, of paying your debt payments. We're not going to default. They do this all the time. And in fact, the reason that the Democrats are hitting the gas to do the scare, you know, fear mongering scare tactics is because they saw us successfully wrestle control of the message two weeks ago, work with Kevin McCarthy, work a deal where we could agree that we were going to make spending restraint our top priority to make sure that we limit the spending that is currently funding the bureaucrats that are funding woke, weaponized, and wasteful spending undermining the American people. We should use the debt ceiling to limit that spending, and then we should be on offense talking about what this means for the American people. Again, you can't gloss over what you just said about the climate change, uh, you know, worshiping and the woke policies that are undermining our ability to create wealth. I, right here in Texas, we're going to be looking at 50 percent of our grid being wind and solar by the end of 2023. And I'm sure all the green folks are clapping. But you know what that means? You don't have reliable power when you end up with a big winter storm or, or a heat wave in the summer. We need to make sure we've got the right policies to create wealth and create uh, economic opportunity for the American people. We've got those policies. And it starts with spending restraint in Washington. Stop spending money we don't have. You know, Chip, if you think, if you see a recession coming and the numbers today... Yeah. 
had a definite recession feels them. This thing could come on faster. I, I don't know, but they were bad numbers. I'd want to cut spending, I'd want to cut taxing, and I'd want to cut regulations. Okay? Boom, yep. boom, boom. Uh, tax cuts, you know, John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump. Heck, I'll go all the way back to Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge. They uh, cut spending and cut taxes and reduced debt and got us out of the post-World uh, War I uh, deep recession. Biden doesn't seem to want to talk to you. That's the thing that amazes me. There's no reset. He just uh, thinks he's going to get a clean debt bill. It's like you all don't exist. I don't understand that. Well, there's no question that this isn't going to be like Bill Clinton after the 1994 contract with America, where he kind of came in and what did he say? He said the era of big government is over. Uh, the people around Joe Biden are going to continue to drive this leftist reimagining of America, this new world order that allows for wide open borders, clamping down on American energy independence, stifling growth and opportunity while increasing the size of government. The American people want the opposite of that. The House Republicans were given the majority for a reason. We need to go message to the American people that we can constrain government, empower them, create wealth and opportunity, and drive our truck right through this and out of this recession if you stop getting government in the way. Again, the inflation was caused by government action. That's what happened. We saw it. You dumped trillions of the economy under COVID. First of all, let's learn our lesson about COVID. Don't use emergency powers to destroy the greatest economy in the history of the world. But we can salvage that by re-empowering the American people and getting government out of the way. And absolutely on taxes. Look, last year we brought in how much? Four point X trillion dollars of revenue, the highest in history. Mm -hmm. Like, we've got revenue, but we've got a massive spending problem and we've got to get our arms around it. And that's what we got a commitment to do. And that's what House conservatives are pushing the entire conference to do. And credit to Kevin. We're all working together to try to do that. And, and I think we're going to take a message to the White House that's very clear. I mean, you got... So much, I mean, record revenues, you're absolutely right. It's over $4 trillion, 20 percent of GDP. I think it's a historic record. You got revenues right. to pay the interest on the bonds. You got revenues to pay social. You do, it, there's no issue here about default and all that. Others, I would say you want to deal with the recession? Make the government sector smaller and the private sector larger. I believe somebody once called that free market capitalism. Heaven forbid. Well, that's, that's exactly right, Larry. And, and look, I think what, what the American people are going to see through all of this is if you stop spending money that you don't have to fund bureaucrats that are driving you crazy, whether it's the FBI, whether it's the EPA, whether it's the SEC, whether it's Lena Khan and the FCC, which you were just talking about, then you're going to free up the American people to do their job. Give us energy independence. Stop regulating us to death. Get the tax structure so that we can free people up. But stop deficit spending to fund bureaucracy and woke weaponized government and we'll win the message. Thank you, Congressman Chip Roy. We appreciate it very much. Hope to see you soon.